Luigi, I'm so excited. Are you? Extremely excited. We have Mr. Entertainment himself. Himself. Our very own. Mm-hmm. Mr. Sheldon Kagan. Welcome. Welcome, Sheldon. Okay, and I'm excited too, so there we go. It's so fun. Over 50 years of career in entertainment, you started at your own business at the age of 15, 15. That's DJing. It. You know, at 15, I had this passion. I wanted to be in entertainment. I knew it wasn't going to happen staying in school. I knew it wasn't going to happen living at home. So at 15, I quit school and ran away from home, and I started my business. And of course, it, you know, it was tough. But if you persevere and you want something badly enough, you can do it. And it wasn't about money back then. No. At all. It was truly your passion. You ran with it, and 50 years later, a whole career. You actually invited so many international uh, stars to, to come to Montreal. Yeah. Well, that's it. I, I started as a dish jockey, and then that went so well, I started bringing other DJs on board to work for me, and then I started working with bands, and then I sort of said, hey, wait a second, what about all these jazz performers that are not coming to Montreal? So in 1969, I brought Dizzy Gillespie and Gene Krupa to Place des Arts. I was and still am the youngest producer to ever do a show at Place des Arts. You were 19, right? Yeah, when it, was this just, happened? it was just a kid. Uh, I didn't even want to meet the agents in New York because I thought they wouldn't find me credible. So I did everything on the telephone until one day the agent said, look, Sheldon, we've got to meet. He sent me first class tickets to New York, picked me up in a limo, took me to the Wald of Astoria. And when I walked into his office, I'm sure he wanted to say, excuse me, son, how come your father couldn't make it? Because he had no <laughs> idea how old I was. And, and that's how it all started. And then I had incredible story. I mean, I brought George Benson to Montreal. Uh, I got a call from Clive Davis, who founded Whitney Houston. And he had a brand new band he wanted to bring to Montreal. And I, had brought, I was bringing in Delaney and Bonnie uh, and Billy Preston and John Hammond. And he said, let's take out John Hammond. I'll give you a new group called Loggins and Messina for $500. So I said, OK. A year later, they were superstars. I reached their agent and told them the story. I want to bring them back to Montreal. They said, that would be fine, but we want $175,000. Did you pinch yourself? Yeah. Like, okay, is it five, really I good? still have. <laughs> I've got my five. So, so I had lots and lots of really good stories. You know, uh, uh, Dionne Warwick came to Montreal a few years ago to work for me. We had a great time. And in the dressing room, she said, Sheldon, it was so much fun working with you and your son. And I said, well, thank you very much. And, because you're so happy, can I impose on you? I said, you know, your, your niece, Whitney Houston, is having some problems. I'd love to try and bring her to Montreal. Maybe it can be good for her. She said, well, she just finished the movie, The Bodyguard. She said, I'll be seeing, seeing her mom next month, and let me see if I can help bring her to Montreal. Well, of course, you know, you know that didn't happen. So there was a lot, a lot of good times. The Commodores, who are Lionel Richie's mm -hmm. band, we, we spent like two days with them in Montreal. Like they, they, I think a lot of the agents that are out there do it only as a business. So the performers felt, hey, this guy is a nice person like us. So they really appreciated working with me, not just for the money. The most rewarding, gratifying, yet difficult thing you ever had to do was to uh, not get rid, because you didn't get rid of, of, uh, of everything, but I mean, 30,000 uh, CDs, videos, statues. Records. Oh, yeah. Well, I Your accumulated an unbelievable record collection. You know, when I was retiring, I knew, I, you know, I had a, two rooms in my house were full. I wasn't going to take that because I wanted to sell my house and move into a condo. Do I sell it? Who do I give it to? I did a lot of research, and I realized that Vanier was the best place to go. So I gave them everything. And in the next few months, I'll be opening a Linda and Sheldon Kagan music library in our honor. Mm -hmm. And that's going to have our records. It's got the statues. It's got instruments, my music paintings. And that's going to last forever, which is really wonderful. So you're giving back to the next generation. This For is sure. So cool. This is beautiful. What would, what would you say are your top three highlights of your 50-year career? Well, you know, being able to entertain people. I mean, when I was 15, 16 years old, you know, I'd walk into churches or 
synagogue and say, hey, I'm Shelley the K and I want to entertain you. And then they looked at me like, are you serious? Like, what radio station are you with? I said, I'm not on radio, I'm a <laughs> DJ. And, and they gave me a chance and I was charging $25 a night and I went out and got people dancing, you know, doing hula hoop, limbo. So definitely the entertainment side of it is one of the best things. The other side was doing my wedding show in 1980. I said, how can I get more brides to be interested in my company? So I started Le Salon de la Marie, and it was unbelievable to see all these bride and grooms holding hands, walking into my show at the Palais des Congrès. So that was really, really rewarding. And the other side is really what I'm doing currently now. I decided I want to give back to the community. Uh, I'm not interested in sort of the commercial side of things when corporations call wanting to book us. Sorry, not interested. So each year I'm going to pick four or five charities. I started last year and I'm doing the same this year. So coming up real soon on April 20th, I'm doing something for West Island Citizen Advocacy, which is a great organization helping people in need. And I'm helping them organize a wine tasting gala at nice. the Dorval Community Center. And I'm supplying all the music for them. And then on May 17th, I'm doing something for Shield of Athena, mm -hmm. which again is a phenomenal organization helping battered women. So we rented the Rialto Theater and we're doing a super, super, super concert. I mean, you gotta come see this. It's, uh, I have comedian Mike Patterson, Pierre Propal and Nancy Martinez, which are excellent singers. I've got Edward Orion, which is a really super piano player, and a band called Made in Canada, which is going to play the top music from Canadian artists. And especially with Canada celebrating their 150th anniversary, it's perfect. So May 17th at the Rialto, and then in June I'm going to the Coming Center, where I volunteer to give back to the volunteers that help the community center. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing their volunteer party for a thousand volunteers. That's and this amazing. year is going to be a beach party. So I'm going to, th these are great. I'm going to do this forever. Weren't you retired? <laughs> I, I, I'm retired, but, but this is what I want to do. Like, but I, thank you for sti sticking around. Yeah, <laughs> and people are amazed. Like they're coming up to me when I offer them what I'm doing. They say, why are you doing this? I said, hey. Or they'll say, we can't afford you. And I said, I don't want any money. But this is really good. I think everybody should give back what they can and, and in the way that suits the most. And me, rather than donate money to organizations where I may not know where the money is going, I want to see it directly reach the people that I'm helping. So, so this is what I'm doing. So, so I'm retired, but I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, my wife Linda is involved with the business. My son uh, Barry and Marlene come to the events and still help out. And it, it's sort of a family affair. So everything now is about traveling. Uh, I'm off on a 24-day cruise in a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, family and the, the associations with the volunteers is really, really good. Um, you started at the age of 15, uh, quite impressive. W what, what can you tell our youth uh, and the parents of our youth that these kids want to get into, uh, want to start something uh, and to persevere? Like, w what are some words you can tell them? Well, it really is follow your dreams. I mean, y if you believe that you have something you want to do, you've got to give it a try. You know, you, you can't give up if it's really a passion. And, and you've got to look out there and, and see what you want to do and just do it. And that's what it applies to everybody with everything that, you know, that, that you can do. You might fail even numerous times before you actually make it. Oh, my God. And that's I, why it's so important to keep mm -hmm. going. My early years, I mean, I sometimes didn't get the doorbell because I couldn't pay the paper boy. I, I mean, it was, you know, you, Trust me, when I started, I sublet an apartment at 15 from someone who rented it to me. You know, I had enough money for the first month's rent, a pot and pan. Uh, my parents were certainly not happy that I had left home. And, uh, you know, my mom came by and she brought me some food and did my laundry. But it certainly, you know, w was not easy. You know, but, but there was nothing going to stop me. I mean, uh, I, had, I, I did my wedding show during the ice storm. I mean, mm -hmm. the day before my show, the city of Montreal and the fire department gave me permission. And, you know, so every industry, everybody has their trials and tribulations you have to go with. But if you have a pa passion, you, you could almost do anything you really want to do. And, and I did. And that's where, after 50 years, I said, look, that's it goodbye and I'm out there but completely on my own terms and conditions now 
Beautiful. This is awesome. This is You're great. such a monument to us of success. Thank you so much for being. Thank you for your inspiration. That's yeah, amazing. Thank you to all of us and all our viewers. Uh, come again. I'm happy to be here. Nice yeah. to talk to you guys. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you.